the only daughter of a well-known public figure experienced a deeply heartbreaking event. This incident prompted the authorities to make every effort possible, and as the strongest evidence emerged, the public was left in shock. Hello, I'm Rima, and welcome to True Story Channel. Being a mother is the greatest gamble in the world, and a mother's embrace leaves a lasting impression, even after it is let go. In this video, we will witness a sorrowful event that highlights a mother's unconditional love. But before we continue, please note that the incident we are sharing is a true story, not a movie. On June 23, 1980, a daughter named Pai Yen was born. She was the beloved child of Pai Bingbing, a famous actress from Taiwan, and Iki Kajiwara, a Japanese comic writer and wrestling enthusiast. Aside from her acting career, Pai Bingbing was also known as a singer and television host. She began her career in 1973 by participating in a talent search competition. In 1975, she went to Japan to study music and acting. There, she met Iki Kajiwara, and the two fell in love. Despite Iki Kajiwara's troubled past, he had been rebellious and had a history of being unfaithful, Pai Bingbing accepted him and they pursued a serious relationship. In 1978, the couple married, and a year later, Pai Bingbing gave birth to their daughter. This child brought immense joy to both parents. However, their happiness was short-lived as their marriage began to deteriorate. They often argued, and Pai Bingbing faced domestic abuse. Eventually, she decided to separate and return to Taiwan with her infant daughter. Shortly after their move, Iki Kajiwara passed away due to illness. Although this deeply saddened Pai Bingbing, she remained strong and committed to raising her daughter as a single mother. Over time, Pai Yen grew into a beautiful, kind-hearted, and compassionate young woman. She was tall, slim, with short hair, and known for her friendliness and willingness to help others. She often assisted strangers or tourists who were lost, and she aspired to become a journalist. Despite being the daughter of a famous actress, Pai Yen was humble and lived a normal life like any other child her age. Watching her daughter grow into a bright and healthy young woman, Pai Bingbing was both proud and concerned. As a mother, she worried about her daughter's habit of interacting with strangers, yet she admired her bravery and desire to help others. At one point, Pai Bingbing invited her daughter to join her on a television show, and Pai Yen gladly accepted. The public witnessed the heartwarming bond between mother and daughter as they performed together on stage. Everyone adored Pai Yen just as much as they admired her mother. On April 14, 1997, Pai Yen woke up to the sound of her alarm clock. As usual, she went to her mother's room and gently kissed her forehead before heading off to school. At 16, she had just started high school. However, during her journey to school, she was suddenly ambushed by three men who emerged from a white van. From that moment on, Pai Yen's whereabouts became unknown, though her mother remained unaware of the situation at first. Later that day, around four in the afternoon, Pai Bingbing was at a recording studio, going about her usual routine as an actress. Suddenly, she received a disturbing phone call from a man who sounded intoxicated. He instructed her to go to a golf course to retrieve her daughter's personal belongings, which he claimed were placed on a mound resembling a grave. The man also warned her not to report the incident to the police and insisted she come alone. At the studio, her colleagues grew anxious and suspected that Pai Yen had been kidnapped. They advised Pai Bingbing not to go alone and to contact the authorities for protection. Fearful and unsure of what to do, she eventually decided to call the emergency number. Soon, police arrived to strategize, urging caution in the investigation. They allowed Pai Bingbing to enter the golf course first, followed discreetly by officers pretending to be visitors. Additionally, the authorities advised her and her colleagues to remain silent about the situation, warning them not to speak of Pai Yen's disappearance to anyone. Several colleagues volunteered to assist with the search, and the police granted permission. Together, they searched the entire golf course for four hours, but could not find any mound resembling a grave. Determined, Pai Bingbing ventured into a densely wooded area at the edge of the course. After wandering for some time, she returned to the entrance, where she eventually found a plastic bag lying atop a mound of dirt. The police stopped her from touching the bag and handed her bamboo tongs to avoid leaving fingerprints. Inside the bag, she found her daughter's lunchbox. To her horror, it contained a severed pinky finger wrapped in tissue, along with a letter written by Pai Yen herself. The letter contained a ransom demand of 5 million US dollars, 
equivalent to approximately 11.7 million in local currency. Pai Bingbing also found three photos showing her daughter in a state of distress, partially undressed, with her hands and feet bound and her mouth taped shut. In that moment, Pai Bingbing collapsed in tears. Her colleagues took her home, where they tried to comfort her while the police expanded their search efforts. Two days later, on April 16, 1997, the kidnapper called again, demanding the ransom and specifying a meeting place. He reiterated that Pai Bingbing must come alone, threatening to take Pai Yen's life if she disobeyed. Desperate, the actress tried to negotiate, promising to pay the ransom soon. Pai Bingbing, a well-known actress, was devastated when her daughter Pai So Yen was kidnapped. Desperate to gather ransom money, Pai Bingbing began selling some of her assets. Day after day, she withdrew from her artistic activities, leaving many journalists curious about her situation. Reporters soon flocked to her house to investigate and learned of the kidnapping. Although they intended to report on the situation, the police requested that the media remain silent for at least 12 days. The authorities only permitted the release of news after they received orders from their superiors. However, the media's patience ran thin. Two newspapers and a television program decided to break the silence, broadcasting the news of Pai So Yen's abduction. They even made it the headline and printed the girl's face on the front pages. At that point, media outlets focused more on ratings and readership rather than the safety of the victim or respect for the privacy of the family. This lack of empathy was evident as journalists disregarded the safety of both Pai So Yen and her mother, Pai Bingbing. The relentless pursuit of the media caused Pai Bingbing considerable emotional and physical exhaustion. At one point, she arranged to meet the kidnappers with part of the ransom. The police advised her to be cautious, discreetly following her in a taxi, and even monitoring from the sky using a helicopter. Unfortunately, journalists discovered this police operation and began trailing her as well. When the kidnappers realized they were being followed by both police and reporters, they changed the meeting location multiple times and used several different phone numbers. This made it difficult for the police to track them, and the meeting between Pai Bingbing and the kidnappers never took place. Six days later, Pai Bingbing received a heartbreaking phone call. On the other end, she could hear the desperate cries of her daughter, who was pleading for help. Police, who were also monitoring the call, suspected that the voice on the phone might have been a recording, but Pai Bingbing, filled with hope and despair, decided to rush to the stadium where the meeting was set to take place. Once again, however, both the police and reporters followed her. As a result, the kidnappers canceled the meeting, and Pai Bingbing was left heartbroken. The next day, in an emotional press conference, Pai Bingbing pleaded with the media to help her find her daughter and ask them to stop following her every move. She was visibly overwhelmed, expressing her sadness and frustration publicly. Meanwhile, the police managed to trace one of the phone numbers used by the kidnappers. It led them to a man named Lin Chun Seng, a former convict involved in previous kidnapping cases. Lin had been in contact with two other criminals, Chen Chen Xing and Cao, both of whom had criminal records for sexual assault. All three men had served time together in the same prison. The police launched a thorough investigation to track down this trio of dangerous criminals. The authorities soon targeted Chen Qianxing's house, hoping to arrest him. Initially, his wife appeared cooperative, but at the last moment, she betrayed the police by warning her husband to flee. Chen Qianxing managed to escape before entering the house, and the police detained his wife, suspecting her involvement in the case. They believed that it was her voice impersonating Pai So Yen during the phone calls to mislead Pai Bingbing. Despite their suspicions, the woman never admitted her role in the crime. On the 28th of April, 1997, police finally made a grim discovery. They found the body of a young girl floating in a water channel near an abandoned building. The body had been weighed down to ensure it stayed submerged. Upon receiving the news, Pai Bingbing rushed to the scene to identify the body. The girl's remains had been in the water for several days and were badly decomposed. The victim's eyes had been removed, and her pinky finger was missing. Despite the horrific condition of the body, Pai Bingbing immediately recognized her daughter, claiming that she could identify her just by seeing her legs. The body was sent to a hospital for an autopsy, which confirmed that Pai So Yen had been sexually assaulted and suffered internal bleeding. The autopsy also revealed two gunshot wounds to her head, which ultimately caused her death. Shockingly, the results indicated that Pai So Yen had been killed 10 days before her body was discovered, 
while negotiations with the kidnappers were still ongoing. This suggested that her voice had indeed been faked during the final phone calls. Anger and grief swept through the community. The police publicly condemned the media for their intrusive coverage and had to spend an enormous sum of money to buy back newspapers that displayed images of the victim's body, hoping to prevent them from spreading further. Meanwhile, public outrage grew, with citizens demanding justice and calling for the swift arrest of the criminals responsible. On the 19th of August, 1997, police received a tip regarding the whereabouts of two suspects. They immediately dispatched a special unit to the reported location, where they encountered Kao Tian Min and Lin Chun Seng. A shootout ensued, during which one officer tragically lost his life, and several others were injured. Kao Tian Min managed to escape, while Lin Chun Seng, having been shot multiple times, took his own life by using a gun on himself. In the days that followed, the police learned that Kao Tian Min and Chen Qian Xing had undergone facial surgeries at a beauty clinic to evade capture. The pursuit of justice for Pai So Yen, though tragically delayed, continued as the authorities remained determined to bring all those responsible to justice. After the kidnapping of her daughter, Pai Bingbing took immediate action by selling several of her assets to raise the ransom money. As days passed, the actress withdrew from all her public activities, which aroused the curiosity of reporters. They began investigating her situation by visiting her home, soon discovering the tragic circumstances surrounding her daughter, Pao Yen. Although the police requested the media to remain silent for 12 days to protect the investigation, this request was disregarded. Several media outlets ran headlines about Pao Yen's abduction, focusing more on increasing their ratings and readership than on the safety of the victim and her mother. Feeling physically and emotionally drained, Pai Bingbing became overwhelmed as the media continued to invade her privacy. When the time came for her to meet the kidnappers to deliver part of the ransom, the police instructed her to remain cautious. Undercover officers followed her, while a helicopter monitored the situation from the sky. However, the media also followed closely, causing the kidnappers to change the meeting location multiple times. The constant interference from both the media and the police hindered the negotiations, with the kidnappers using different phone numbers and locations to avoid being traced. Six days later, Pai Bingbing received a heart-wrenching phone call where she heard the voice of her daughter pleading for help. However, the police suspected that the voice was a recording, or had been altered, yet the actress was determined to continue with the plan. Unfortunately, once again, the media's interference led to the meeting being cancelled. Pai Bingbing held a press conference, pleading with the media to stop following her and asking for their assistance in finding her daughter. Her emotional outburst conveyed the depth of her pain and frustration with the situation. The police eventually traced one of the phone numbers used by the kidnappers to a man named Lin Chun Seng, a known criminal with a history of kidnapping. Investigations revealed that Lin had been in contact with two other ex-convicts, Chen Chen Sing and Kao, both of whom had served time for serious offenses. Law enforcement swiftly began to track down the trio. Their search led them to the home of Chen Chen Sing, but his wife, who initially cooperated, betrayed the police by warning her husband to flee before they could apprehend him. The police suspected that she had impersonated Pao Yen during the earlier phone call to mislead the actress. On April 28, 1997, the authorities made a devastating discovery. Pao Yen's lifeless body was found floating in a canal, weighted down to ensure it remained submerged. Media outlets wasted no time in broadcasting images of her body, further traumatizing Pai Bingbing. Despite the media frenzy, she rushed to the scene to confirm that the body was indeed her daughter. Even though the corpse had been underwater for several days, she immediately recognized her child, identifying her by distinctive physical features. The autopsy confirmed that Pao Yen had suffered horrific abuse before her death. She had been assaulted and shot twice in the head. The police deduced that the kidnappers had already ended her life while negotiations with Pai Bingbing were still ongoing, further solidifying their belief that the voice heard during the final phone call had been faked. Despite the media's inappropriate coverage, including publishing graphic images of Pao Yen, the police worked diligently to find the criminals. On August 19, 1997, a tip led the authorities to two of the kidnappers. A confrontation ensued, during which one officer tragically lost his life, and several others were injured. Although Kao managed to escape, Lin Chun Seng was fatally wounded and realizing he was trapped, ended his own life. Several days later, the police received information about Kao's whereabouts at a beauty clinic. 
where he and Chen Chen Sing had planned to undergo plastic surgery to alter their appearances. When the police arrived, they found the clinic's doctor, two nurses, and the doctor's wife dead, all shot in the head. The police believed that the criminals had killed the medical staff when they refused to perform the surgery. Later, on November 17, 1997, Cao was cornered in a massage parlor, where, after a fierce exchange of gunfire, he took his own life to avoid capture. The following day, Chen Chen Sing shocked the public by taking an entire family hostage, including Colonel Edward McGill Alexander, a South African military officer stationed in Taiwan, along with his wife and children. The situation escalated when Chen injured the family members, using them as leverage to negotiate for his wife's release. The police chief, Ho Yu Yi, acted as the negotiator, persuading Chen to release some of the hostages. After hours of tense negotiations, Chen finally surrendered on November 19th, agreeing to give himself up in exchange for his wife's safety. Chen Chen Singh was later tried in court on January 22, 1998, where he was charged with multiple counts of kidnapping, assault, and murder. He was sentenced to death five times over. Ho Yu Yi's promise of leniency had been a strategic move to ensure the safety of the hostages, a fact that Chen only realized once he was behind bars. Deeply remorseful, Chen expressed his desire to donate his organs after his execution, which took place on October 6, 1999. Even though justice had been served, Pai Bingbing and her family continued to feel the immense pain of losing their daughter. They harbored suspicions about Chen's wife, believing she had played a role in the crime. Despite the execution of the perpetrators, the public remained outraged at the media's role in the tragedy, as well as the government's failure to protect the young girl. Pai Bingbing returned to her career, though she kept a lower profile, enduring further heartache when a member of the public cruelly mocked her daughter's death. However, the individual responsible was later found to be mentally ill, providing little solace to the grieving mother. This tragic case left a lasting impact on Taiwan, highlighting the complex relationship between the media, public safety, and the justice system. In response to public criticism, several ministers resigned as a form of moral accountability following the resolution of Pai Xiaoyan's case in court. The Taiwanese authorities have since implemented stricter regulations on media coverage, particularly around sensitive cases like this one. The government also took measures to limit the circulation of information regarding the tragic incident out of respect for Pai Bingbing and her family. From this case, we can learn that when someone becomes a mother, her thoughts are forever intertwined with those of her children. She will often think of herself, but even more frequently, she will be thinking about her child. Therefore, we always remind everyone to stay vigilant, be kind, and cherish your mother. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.